The YouTuber Illuminati is one of the least creative individuals who doesn't edit her own videos, but she steals from others. She only talks, but talks for all the other people working for her, and she silences criticism and strikes down people without an audience for bringing up her troubled past. This is the story of a pathological liar. This is a story of someone who will never stop. This is the story of Illuminati. No talent, no skill, and no dignity. This is one of the worst YouTubers I've ever seen. Illuminati is a YouTuber, a very bad one, but one that recently got into a bunch of controversy over this plagiarism case that spiraled into a bunch of other actions. Essentially, on the 20th of April 2023, in a now deleted tweet, she calls out Legal Eagle, with over 2.3 million sub YouTuber, saying, Not to Legal Eagle editors breaching my editors to take my video star, and when I don't give them the info, they literally copied it. And by the way, I have the message from my editors, and I found an email of them too. Just to change the color from purple to blue. Huh, interesting. So you think of such a vexation allegation that someone who has the name legal in his name, there would be some sort of more spurious claims and some just real conjecture. He follows up with this. So I went through the, my emails and just found this outrage saying, yes, I'm just going to do this, but you could make it easier for me and I'd appreciate it. Example A. <laughs> also went to my Discord server to try and come more to cop the style. She's complaining about basically a recommendation of a template. And the amount of YouTubers who have stolen, or rather, I've handed over my Red Galaxy plugins for Premiere to. You know, of course, legal, and given the legal license. Uh, but Luminati seems to be, okay, if we do that, then there would be serious issues with. For example, it's even getting to the point where posts like this are going viral. Retweet to scare Illuminati and it's just a piece of paper ripped in two because of how just comical a lot of people are finding that. But once again, this person seems to just hit the iceberg of controversy, being so the fact that this inadvertently exposed a lot of different people coming out, Wiggle Wiggle actually ended up responding to this entire thing, practically bunking the entire claims, saying, hey Illuminati, I think this is a big misunderstanding. Perhaps great minds think alike. No one on my team is trying to copy you. Without an exhausted review of your channel, I believe we used those two styles before your channel did. We've used them for three to four years. He would continue to say, and plus the two styles, a pseudo paper rip and highlight, are extremely common on YouTube. The editor you're talking about didn't even design either of those two elements. Again, we've used them for three to four years at this point. Danny is great and a thorough editor. When he reached out via email, he was just hoping to find out what plugin your team used on a particular video. A very common practice among editors. He was not looking to copy anyone's style. Danny is also a freelancer who makes his own videos at Discord. The video he referenced was being inspired by your subject matter. Not to your style, even though he's a fan of yours, the video he was referencing was a video of his own, not a legal eagle video. Here's the end of the Discord channel that Danny provided to me. He was trying to edit a video of his own, use only using DaVinci Resolve. He was just looking for some technical help, and then thanked everyone anyway. YouTube's great because it's a collaborative and the rising tide raises all ships. My team and I always try to provide original, high-quality, informative content. We try to help others when they ask for it. There aren't any really trade secrets around here. I don't know Danny reached out to you, but I don't know, fault him for doing so. If anything, I think everyone on the platform should be more open to sharing. Anyway, if you feel differently or want to hang out, my DMs are open. So, realistically, the reason that Blair tagged Legal Eagle is just to try and swing the bat and trying to swing her own clout at this kind of guy, when realistically, it was an editor doing a private project that wasn't even considered for this. But then if you even break down what was actually happening, it was just, instead of actually dismissing, you know, and even just helping her out, just helping him out. He didn't even have to do that, but the worst case situation was him accusing her of plagiarism when there's been countless examples of her plagiarizing in the past. Members of the now defunct Sad Milk podcast would come out after the controversy to kind of put their own side of the story of her kind of pattern of behavior. For example, the click made a 16 page thread saying, Hey peeps, I have recently seen the dramas regarding Illuminati, and I would like to clarify I'm not affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. I left her collaboration group Sad Milk due to similar behaviour as seen with recent events. Lashing out its friends and fans, paranoia, generally poor anger management to a few. Eventually, I believe <laughs> much the whole group left her. 
The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour, I think, hard to know, screaming at me for an array of random things, calling me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me. There is no way you can have the resume you claim and be this fucking stupid, and so on. No one even raised their voice back at her. I left along with several other members, half the group at the time. She spent the next few months spreading lies and half-truths about us on the Reddit page and vague posts on Twitter. I still have all the screenshots. She would turn friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you, so she had allies against you. That only mainly banned the problematic community members known to be liars and conflict seekers. When people stated questioning that maybe she wasn't the reason everyone left, there was a very convenient updating of 11 to 14 year old videos of me, stuff I made when I started my channel back in 2009. I was a teenager. And you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time aged like milk. I publicly owned up to the past mistakes and apologized, doing my best to be transparent and honest about my past. She would still harp on it, ignoring the fact that it had already been addressed, trying to direct as much attention to it as possible, publicly spacing it was a bad apology, along with vague posting about it in the comments on the collaboration channel. Maybe an attempt to get people to assume that I had been kicked out for poor behaviour, rather than leave out of her own behaviour. She, assuming it was her, as she had channel access, also liked to pull what I can only describe as petty acts of revenge. For example, some people left comments on the collaboration channel, saying, good that click left. They obviously got ratioed hard, as people were there for the creators. She would manually go and delete the ratioing comments, but delete to leave the original hate comments. She tries again in control of my discord when it surpassed her in size by tossing around accusations at staff and trying to get rid of my team and replacing it with hers, giving me the ultimatum to find my entire senior team or to be publicly fired from Sadman myself. I was still a YouTube freshie at the time and she was quite intimidating, claiming connections and count reputation and powerful friends. So everyone stayed mostly silent, and had to constantly look over our shoulders for the next year. None of us even mentioned the whole thing. We were worried talking in our discords, as it became apparent she had spies for photo moderation. Wait, hold on, Tyrone, the birth controller. You mean there's even more members of the Sad Milk podcast that came forward against Illuminati? I might have to run for president again because this is really getting my heart pumping, testing my stamina. Don't worry, Trump. I'll keep it pumping as I'm cleaning this bathtub. Who the fuck is this guy? My Fox News analyst? No, Trump. That would be me. Anyway, another member of the Sad Milk Collaboration Group, Wonderstruck YT, would say, Forgive me for being scattered. Emotions and all. Gotta love them. After this behaviour with a, a breach of speaking out, I can confirm that Blair exhibits the behaviour Blair exhibits is entirely accurate here. I'm aware of the bridges I burn, and remain where I am. After Sad Milk split, it was a consistent negative echo chamber that I took part in. Regardless, I used to edit with Sad Milk. Blair made no effort to take direction, she made everything about herself. Sad Milk at the time was the nearest things a family I had, which sounds pathetic, but the content creator space is a very isolating one. The amount of hours I would spend on making drafts, editorials for new hires, staying up to get some editing in, if editors were short for handed. I missed Christmas with my brother and father fixing a mistake of the editor she had hired and didn't even get a thank you, and it took him more than half of a month to get paid. Meanwhile, she delays payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes, visit BMW dealerships, and spend hundreds on food in a day. While I do hold my beliefs but on certain matters, every month or so, there was a new villain of the week. And one, and they would one second be a normal person in their eyes, and next, suddenly, a hidden monster through, you guessed it, Blair's mouth. To say Sad Milk split on creative differences is a joke, it's a flat out lie. Again, I'm aware the bridges burned, but I can confirm the call took place where she screamed, cursed, and had a meltdown towards Quick and one topic at a time, which was a train wreck. It was just supposed to be a fun group project, and we had become profitable, even to a small extent. But I wanted to create a delete, and we went from being doing fun creative topics 
more in line with the videos we would cover on our own channels to do unenthusiastic view content. We'll click control and we wouldn't even listen to the videos that should be made. And we'll get hyper loud music with childlike sprites paired with adult humour which just me being a part of sad milk humiliating. My friends and I would watch SM and just laugh, not at the content, but how awful it had become. Not due to anyone not being entertaining, but lacked the quality control. It was an editorial nightmare. It's why A in part stopped editing, because my really well content got roped into that by proxy. But I did not care. It was hard that anyone who dared try and take the reins was a threat. After quick OT and salty left, I did almost all the heavy lifting which was a thankless job being so small on the internet. I tried making her schedules, I motivated Blair doing another mental breakdown of hers, not to delete the channel or the Discord, since I actively read the comments of both. And we had people who wanted to. And after months of behind the scenes insults to one click and OT, it became so stale and negative. Yeah, we all took part, but after going on so long, it just became day after day, Blair would sit down and check click and OT social blade. She would just make fake accounts to stalk them. Not just them, but a loud portion of the commentary community. I've seen her try to get her lawyer to shut down anyone who says anything against that they ruined her day by saying, yeah, we can't really do anything. It's insane. It's insane innocent people don't work so hard to try and silence others. We would get no work done. I can't count how many times I pleaded and set up meetings for us to do something and nobody cared. I thought I had a friend who was hurting. Then I saw she had moved to a villain. And like everyone else, I got shut out, trash talked, and the only people I had made efforts to be friends with wouldn't even acknowledge my existence. For me though, I had already moved under good faith I was bettering my life. In 30 days living with her, it was a nightmare. I felt like she was trapped in the home, always. She made everyone her enemy. She called wonder checking to see if I'm okay, an invasion of privacy. I sent her numbers of messages trying to show that I wanted to be a friend. She lives like an actual monster. Her home is a mess. Like a hoarder's bat. Constantly subtweets about me and Discord and Twitter ignoring me. And if I dare say anything back, her Discord manager would happily remind me of my contract. This is disgusting. So my therapist, who she accused me of stealing because she recommended, suggested I leave the house at all costs. And I did. And the details I can't get into further because of legalities, but I ended up with no car, hardly any clothes and money to my name, and no home. Now working full time again, I had no time for my channel, I had cried, bled, and worked through hell to get up. So, I watched it dying because my main concern was food on the table. All because I made friends with one of the most vile people on the platform. Nobody wanted to talk to me, and I was too afraid to go public, as I didn't know the reach this massive creator had. I had everything IRL and online taken from me. See, personally, threw my YouTube play button to attack trash. That yeah, isn't symbolic, man. I don't know what it is. I'd spent the last two years of my life rebuilding from the ground up due to this woman. The only difference is I get to come back stronger as a person. She doesn't. She can't take away that from everyone she had screwed over. But yeah, can't hide anymore. Sooner or later, you're going to push out everyone who cared about you away. And only realize the world isn't out to get you, but make you fear a reality all on your own. I'm not afraid of you. You don't get that from me anymore. Never again. You would see an old example of her deception if you just look basically back on her Reddit thread where some random person asked what happened to the podcast pretty long while around 2020 yes, there was a podcast with Damien later on. I tried to find it but the channel is now gone and I couldn't find what happened to it. As far as I'm aware the only proof that existed was a link of a description of some videos. What I managed to find as I mentioned earlier, the aforementioned link on the Wayback Machine. But Blair has a very strange take after knowing the context now. Podcasts didn't work for either. I like to get schedules and stick to them, and the other two are a little more forward with scheduling. It just ended up being scheduling issues more than anything. Wait, so Tyrone the birth controller? Are you saying that Illuminati would boldface lie to save face? Even with the evidence now, she has to make herself seem in the complete right? Um, but I read it was very odd and strange place. I mean, we've talked about the people who used to work for them, but what about the people that used to watch them and look passionately? There were people here that said, you know, I've recently, after finding this channel, have a sudden chronic bout of depression. But it's obviously nothing to do with this channel that I'm being exposed to right now, and of course, it's my favorite YouTuber. Recently, for example, recently I've been played by Dread, but normally I have been 
After an innocuous visit to the Illuminati YouTube channel, I've been hit by an ominous feeling of despair. I'm no longer st a stranger to bad news, but I'm surrounded by it, and often I'm forced to interact with reports of it to keep my friends and family informed. It's either because of hyperfixation due to my autism, or another time when overhearing gets the better of me, and this is a coincidence. I recommend her channel. She seems an upbeat person. I'm glad to see people like her in the world. But it's a shame that I've been afflicted by this bout of nonsense right now, because I'm a fan of patterns. And this is, seems to be a very strange pattern. Another person from a different time zone. Wholesome tagged, by the way. I have been dealing with severe depression these past few years, and I noticed I have been avoiding the Illuminati channel more and more. This is because most, if not all, the videos about fucked up things happening in the world. Please don't get me wrong, I understand it's important to be aware of negative things that are happening so we can make an effort to make the world a better place. That being said, I also think it's important to take a break every once in a while from all the negativity for the sake of our mental health. Whatever happened to the kind of weird wild world videos? That was the plan I was most excited about, but then it just kind of... Docked. I wish there was more content like that. I'm only saying this because I love the way she does her videos, but the constant reminder how shitty the world is putting me off the channel recently. I have nothing but love for Illuminati, and what she does is amazing, I just wish there was more mental health videos. But perhaps one of the most insane responses is, Blair slash mom is cool, is the best YouTuber as there's nothing anyone can do about it because mom has a good opinion on basically everything and i hate lmms and my favorite thing mom does is prism of the past with the apt response immediately being is this a cult <laughs> well based on what i've heard and based on the evidence shown i would say yes